Hey guys, my name is PK Halford, and if it's your first time finding this channel, welcome. So I wanted to go on a bit of a big rant today, hopefully spark a bit of discussion and debate, and it has to do with one of the most highly regarded films of all time, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. There's really not a whole lot that you can say about this movie that hasn't already been said. People have made entire feature-length documentaries simply about fan theories as to the meaning and symbolism behind this piece of work. My main point of discussion for this video is the performance by Shelley Duvall as Wendy Torrance in this film. It seems that there are two camps when it comes to Miss Duvall, fiercely split down the middle and never the two shall meet. One camp hails her performance as one of the most gripping and realistic portrayals of a desperate and terrified mother ever captured on film. Or, if you're like me, in the other camp, you think it's shit. The performance seems to have garnered as much heat as it has praise, even receiving a Worst Actress nomination at that year's Razzie Awards. She's consistently shrill, her voice ping-pongs between barely audible and ear-splitting, and there are times when she barely even sounds coherent. Those who enjoy the performance will defend this by saying things like, Look at how real the fear is in her eyes! Listen to the stress and anguish in her voice! To which I would reply, and bear with me on this one, Yes, the performance is realistic, but that doesn't necessarily make it good. But Halford, you beer-soaked old piss tank, that makes no sense. Isn't an actor's skill measured by how realistically they can portray emotions? Only partially. An actor must also be able to take that emotion and put it on display in a way that is fundamentally sound from a performance standpoint, meaning that they're not so emotionally charged that it's distracting to the audience, or that we can't hear all of those wonderful lines that the writers worked so hard on. It's all about finding a balance between having high emotion and energy, and still having good conveyance to your audience, even if that means that the performance isn't 100% grounded in realism. For example, even if you're playing a character who is completely racked with grief, even though it may make more sense realistically for you to sob uncontrollably, your voice to continually break, and for you to blow a big snot on your coat sleeve, if your character has dialogue during that scene, you're gonna have to tone it down a bit, simply so that you can be understood. I'm rambling here, but a quicker way to sum up the argument against overuse of realism is this. Children are almost never cast as voice actors. Instead, most, if not all, cartoons cast adult women to voice children, regardless of the character's gender. Now, it may not be the most realistic thing to do, but I guarantee that your performances will all be much more fundamentally sound, because those women are just more experienced as performers, even if they're using a fake voice. Besides, have you ever heard children trying to perform something? Christ, it's like having teeth pulled. Now, rather than pinning all of the blame for this performance on poor Shelley, much of it actually has to do with the film's director, one Stanielson J. Kubrick Esquire. Mr. Kubrick, aside from his usual hobbies of overthrowing the director of photography and demanding a biblical amount of retakes, decided that the best way to elicit an exceptional performance from Miss Duval was to make her existence the quote-unquote drizzling shits. Kubert would go out of his way to bully and belittle Duval on set, going as far as telling her that she was worthless and wasting the time of everyone on set. As if that weren't enough, Cubone would order other members of the crew not to sympathize with Duval in order to push her feelings of hopelessness and isolation to their peak. It got so bad that clumps of Shelley's hair began falling out during filming as a result of the huge levels of stress. You hear the term method acting bandied around in reference to actors who attempt to drastically alter their own lifestyles to match those of their character, in order to attain a higher understanding of that character's life and experiences. For lack of a better term, we could refer to old Stanley's approach here as method directing, in that he was attempting to force negative change onto his lead actress's reality in order to influence her connection with the character. This is by no means the only example of this technique being used by a director on their actors. In 1999, The Blair Witch Project was released to a surprising amount of critical acclaim and box office success. As time went on, it came to light just how batshit bonkers that the film's directors had taken the method directing concept, taking every possible opportunity to fuck with their cast. Leaving them out in the woods for the entirety of shooting, with only vague directions to their next campsite shaking their tents and making noise in the middle of the night to scare their actors to death, 
even cutting back food on a daily basis with the expressed intent of breeding animosity between the three main cast members. We hear stories like this and our first reactions are mainly, what a fucking pair of assholes those directors were. If I were acting on that film, I would have beaten the piss out of them. But it's remarkable how many film buffs will say that and then turn around and give Stanley a pass for similar behavior because of what a genius he was or because he spoke nothing but praise for Duvall after shooting was completed. Well, I'm sorry, QB. I don't care how many Peter Sellers you put in your movies, tormenting and verbally berating a woman who is just trying to do her job, up to and beyond the point of hair loss, is not an okay thing to do. Drawing from my personal acting experience, if I was ever to find out that my director was intentionally fucking with me to try and make my emotions take over my performance, I would not only be insulted, but pissed off. To me, a director who is resorting to those kinds of tactics is telling you, I don't trust that you're a capable or competent enough actor to perform the scene as required. Not only that, but it reflects poorly on the director that they can't properly convey to their actors what they're trying to achieve from them for their scene. A good director works with the actor, each one offering the other fresh insight into the role. A good director guides his actors. He doesn't just sit there and tell them, be more scared or be angrier this take. And he certainly shouldn't start attempting to manipulate them psychologically if he's not good at guiding. Now wait, wait, before someone on the internet tries to crucify me for daring to call the sacred and holy Kubrick into question, I'm not saying he's a bad director. I mean, how could you? Look at his track record. It's because of his obsession with detail that his films are so widely talked about and dissected, and always will be. But it's also that obsession that, when it came to dealing with his actors, made him out to be a complete control freak, and frankly, kind of a massive cunt. And on that note, I think calling one of the most beloved movie directors in cinematic history a cunt is a good place to finish up for today. So what are your thoughts on method acting and directing? Do you think Shelley Duvall's performance was great and that I'm just a cynical douche canoe? Whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear about them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos, be sure to leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel. My name is PK Halford, and I hope to see you again soon. Now, all work and no play has made Halford a dull boy. Time to go get a six pack and rent a few skin flicks.